Hey guys and welcome back and today I want to follow up my previous video about the top tips for improving Plex performance and I want to address that last question about buying a new NAS. If you've got to bite the bullet and buy a brand new NAS as a Plex media server but you haven't got much cash, it's actually quite hard to pick the right NAS drive for Plex. There are quite literally thousands of different devices out there across all the brands. Each one of them going, oh I'm pretty good, oh I'm pretty good, oh actually I'm brilliant. But the problem is all of them are trying to cater to so many things, but really you only want it for Plex. You want to buy this now as a Plex media server and maybe back up some devices, maybe an Apple Time Machine, maybe even a little bit of DLNA. But for the most part, 80, 90%, you want a Plex NAS. And almost none of these uh, brands actually point at one device and go, that is our Plex NAS. That one right there, that, that right there, that's our Plex NAS. So, although I've done videos like this before, every time I make this video, every half a year, a year, whatever, everything gets outdated. Devices arrive, devices go. So for right now, these are the top three Plex NASes that you can buy right now for under 500. I'm gonna do one of these for a thousand, one of them for 2000. And the reason I'm not really gonna to talk too much about currency denominations, dollars, pounds, euros, is one, YouTube's everywhere. You're watching this somewhere in the world. Maybe you're watching this somewhere obscure. Hello, let me know in the comments if you're on top of a freaking mountain or something. But, and that's a great place to watch Plex from, by the way. Um, if you are looking at a Plex NAS, on a budget, I've got to tell you right now that for a good Plex NAS that's going to be reliable, you are looking at spending around 500 of your currency. Now there's going to be obvious exceptions, Taiwanese dollar and Hong Kong dollar, they're going to be way, way higher on the face of things. So you're going to have to hold, you know, bear with me a little bit, but know that for 500 of your currency, again, pounds, dollars, euros, ideally, of what I'm talking about here, then this should get you, 500 should get you a Plex Media server that will transcode 1080p media, will play very, very stably, will arrive with the storage space and include your local tax. So all three of these NASs should be within that bracket. So any, any of these three devices should give you everything, storage, Plex, 1080p coverage, some incredibly light 4K coverage and an area of space all within your tax. So, without further ado, let's go to the first one here, and I know I've talked about it before, but even now, almost two years down the line, it is still one of the best for your money, the Synology DS218 Plus. It is probably one of the most popular two bays I've ever seen Synology put out there. Not since the 214 Play have I seen a NAS that's ticked so many boxes. Now, this device is a two bay Synology NAS. It's got all everything they include with it. It's got two years of warranty. It's got DSM up to 6.2 on it. It's got a dual core Intel based CPU, the J3355 that we're gonna talk about again later in the video. The CPU can play back 4K media. It's rated around 1500 uh, on CPU benchmark and it can not only transcode 4K media but it can transcode 1080p media in Plex. Remember, there is a difference when I say transcoding unless I specifically say transcode in Plex or something with the word Plex in it Take for granted that means native otherwise. Native means using Synology or whatever the brand's own software to play that media and transcode it. Plex is different. Plex requires a little bit more work and it also requires the CPU and the NAS to kind of agree to transcode and let Plex utilize the transcoding engine built into that CPU. And that Intel chip, the J3355, a 2.0 gigahertz CPU, they could be burst up to 2.5 on each core and two gig of DDR3 3L memory, 1866 megahertz. They can be upgraded up to an official six gig of memory, I know, weird, and can go up higher unofficially, but we won't talk about that. Um, this gives you a great base level of support. Also, it arrives about 250 NICA, give or take, um, and that's kind of without the VAT. So include the VAT or your local tax, you're looking around the 300 NICA mark, which gives you about 150 to 200 to spend on media, which you can pick up at least a couple of ones or maybe even a couple of two terabyte hard drives, including tax. And there you go, you've got your first Plex Media server there that not only transcodes to AP media, but will play back. 4K media within Plex and supports Plex very, very well indeed. And that budget of 500, you're not even breaking it. You've even got some change depending on where you are in the world. Now, in, and I'm not gonna say second place, I'm just gonna say two, because these are all these three devices have their own advantages and I'm not gonna make one better than the other. It all depends on you, the end user. 
But the second NAS I'm going to talk about, let's talk about the guys at QNAP. Obviously, because if I talk about Synology, I talk about QNAP and vice versa. It is a NAS that was released, uh, you know, late last year, the TS251B. Now, this was a weird NAS when I first heard about it, but then the more I've heard about it and the more I've used it, the more I love it. Because in terms of hardware, it gives you everything that the previous NAS offered. The 251B from QNAP, again, almost an identical price to the DS218+, Plus, but and, and with the same CPU, that same Intel Celeron J3355, and 2 gig of memory, but can be upgraded to 8 gig. It also arrives with an HDMI out, so you can utilize the NAS locally, connected to your big, big old TV, and that means that any media you watch there requires no mucking around, zero latency weight, it's just straight there with your big media, which is fantastic and controllable, the remote control or a mobile app that's completely for free from QNAP. It also allows you to have audio out, which is pretty cool indeed. It's got more LAN connections, and more importantly, and probably the most exciting thing for me personally, is it has a PCIe upgrade slot. Now, I know a number of Plex buyers aren't going to give a hoot about that PCIe slot. You couldn't care less, and I don't blame you. But in terms of future-proofing, you've got a lot going for you with this device. Because as file types get bigger, and speed of requirements, because remember, even if the media gets bigger, 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 we go 4K to 5K to 8K to 12K, whatever, people are still going to package this data as compressed and efficient as possible. But given that these files now are getting so big, that sending them via your local area network as it stands into your router and the router into the internet to you, it's just not viable. So you need to increase the connection and the communication between your NAS and the router. And from that, you need to start upgrading your connections internally from 1 gig of Ethernet, which is what you've got, to 2.5, to 5, and to 10 gig and more. The PCIe slot on this NAS allows you to upgrade that connection. And if, as we can probably a lot of us see, internet service providers upgrading the ports on their devices for a better connection to other devices in the network, or encouraging people to get network switches in between that are a little bit more techy for offices and allow you to connect between them and increase the ability to upgrade the ports on your NAS long term, make this particularly one of the NASs you go for when you're thinking future-proofing. And within Plex, you might not take advantage of these features immediately, but you will see the benefit in them further down the line. And that's why this has made the list because its performance is fantastic. It's got Plex Media Server. And like all the NASs, and I'll talk more about at the end of the video, there are lots of other things you can do with it. But you're still in budget, and if you go for Seagate, I should have mentioned in the previous video, uh, in the previous entry, if you go for Seagate Iron Wolf NAS hard drives, you will get more capacity for your money too. However you feel about Seagate and WD, that's up to you. Me personally, I've got no problem with Seagate drives for me. They've proven the test of time. I've done my damage tests, my fire tests. They survive with flying colors, but I'm not gonna force you. Finally, the third NAS on my list is one that will surprise a number of you. It's not even two months old, but I've already done my preliminary testing of the device, and I've got to say, I've come away impressed. Even at this price level, it's pretty impressive. That is the Acer Store Nimbus Store 2. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sounds really expensive. Sounds really new. It really isn't. It manages to arrive at a price point that's actually a pinch lower than the first two on this list. The Nimbus Store 2 arrives with a number of the hardware features of the previously mentioned QNAP NAS, but manages to double down and as a modern NAS arrives with some of the newest hardware of any of the NASs on this list. So, Let's tick the boxes. First and foremost, it is a two-bay NAS from Acer Store. It's got those two years of warranty, like every other one on this list. It also arrives with an Intel Celeron dual-core CPU, but in this case, it is the most powerful of the three. And by powerful, I mean the most efficient as well. It's the J4005, a J4000 Celeron CPU, much, much higher benchmark, I believe about 1800 on CPU benchmark. It is a 1.5 gigahertz CPU that can be burst all the way up to 2.5 gigahertz, and to make matters even more impressive, and I'm pretty sure I got those gigahertz wrong, maybe there's a message on the screen, it arrived with 2 gig of DDR4 memory, so 2133 megahertz memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig. By far, the most capable, efficient, uh, and powerful 
of the three NASs today. And it's the newest and still affordable, still in that same price bracket where the base model is around 250 to 270 of your local currency. Now, on top of that, it's worth highlighting that this two bay NAS has got its own app center and it'll support Plex Media Server. Plex Media Server on this device has performed fantastically well. Hopefully by the time of the uploading and publishing of this video, you would have seen the Plex Media results of that device. I've already got the device set up over there. I've got the four bay and the two bay just behind it. And I can say that it has performed remarkably well as a Plex Media Server. It transcoded a lot of the 1080p stuff we threw at it and even some early 4K stuff too. And that is a dual core CPU. And needless to say, this four bay makes it into my 1000 as well. I won't ruin that video for you. But of these three, if you're looking for the one that's the most powerful for Plex, definitely the Nimbus Store 2. But what I will highlight is that in most other regards, it still has a little bit of work to do in stuff outside of Plex. So regardless of the three of these you go for, all three of these devices will give you somewhere in the region of um, two to four terabytes of storage space inside, and it will include the VAT. And again, if it's not under 500, it'll be really close to that number, including tax and storage. <clears throat> now, Outside of Plex, it's worth mentioning that all three of these brands do give you quite a lot. They've all got internet and um, network access. They've all got a bespoke selection of applications, both third and third party. And two of the three, the Synology and the Acer Store, do support uh, BTRFS as its file system with that background snapshot speeds, uh, file self-healing, background integrity checks of data. That's it. QNAP still provides all of these things, just not in BTRFS, but as EXT4 and does it a slightly different way. And some might argue a little bit slower, but that's for you to decide really. But they've all got dedicated surveillance platforms, surveillance station, QVR Pro, and surveillance center, and all of them support IP cameras and more with the uh, the Acer Store 2 there arriving with HDMI 2.0a and before I even forget to get onto it, 2.5 um, GBE ports, two of them. Do you remember what I said about the QNAP there? When it had one uh, uh, PCIe slot to upgrade the ports, the Acer Store arrives with those ports already and they're completely backwards compatible, which means you can use it with your existing setup and later on when you graduate your network speeds, you can take advantage of them in that Acer store. But regardless, all three of them are great Plex Media servers for under 500, depending on where you are in the world now. If you are looking, if you're looking at Taiwanese stuff, you're looking at, you know, in Hong Kong or something like that, where the currency, or even Australia, where the currency conversions are nowhere near as neat, I would still say these are the most affordable, high-performance Plex Media server NASs out there, and I recommend them. Do stay tuned for my 1,000 and 2,000 videos coming very, very soon, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Do buy your NAS from the guys at span.com, the NAS experts, and of course, as I mentioned earlier on, if you are gonna go for the most affordable capacity drives and still maintaining great uh, uh, rigidity and reliability and dependent, dependable nature, definitely see your Iron Wolf right now. If you don't believe me, check out the other videos, but that's up to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.